Hi, I'm David Habib, the author of Auctions for Salesforce. This video will go through all the things you need to know to successfully run your auction the night of with your staff and volunteers. We're going to run through the three major tasks, which are checking in guests, recording guest purchases, and checking out guests. So let's go to Auctions for Salesforce. So here we are logged into Salesforce. And across the top, you'll see a bunch of tabs related to auctions. The first one we will look at is the check-in tab. So this allows you to look up people as they come for your auction. So let's enter someone. I know their last name is Habib, and here I see them. So I choose them, and it automatically looks up their table captain. In this case, it's the same person who's checking in. So assuming everything looked good, I could now save their credit card information. First, I'm going to show you what that's like if you're using IATS Brickwork. And here it comes up in a pop-up window where we would be able to put in whatever we want about their credit card. And then we could uh, mark them as checked in. So I mark them as checked in and it updates here. You can see they're now checked in. So now let's say someone else comes. This person is Abe Lincoln. So you'll see it changed the table captain to the table that Abe has already signed up on. Uh, it says he's already checked in because I was already goofing around with this, but let's pretend it says just RSVPS. So here's an interesting scenario in which uh, their table captain is Johnny Lennon but they're not marked paid. So that kind of means John may not have uh, paid for their tickets, but they were planning on sitting with him. And so that person, Abe Lincoln, we need them to pay. So here's your chance to uh, update any of their contact information, uh, get an updated email or their address. Um, and if you need to add a ticket purchase for them, you click here, we'll scroll down, scroll down. And let's say tickets are $25 a piece and they're just paying for one. And we're going to say it's pledged, which means uh, it will be on their auction receipt as an item that needs to get paid for at the end of the evening. Uh, this type field uh, was a custom field that was added in a field set. We don't need to care about that one. So if I do uh, save and check in contact, we will now have added that ticket purchase uh, to their list of purchases that they pay at, at checkout. You can see we've now marked them paid and they're checked in. So let's do someone else. So I click on next guest. Uh, if someone shows up, let's say it's uh, John Doe. So John checks in and I want to get all his information and I notice that John is also a Jane, and let's pretend they're coming together. The key thing with uh, a couple is we really only want to have one bid number for them so that all of their purchases during the auction will be assigned to the same contact record. And we want it to be the contact record that we save the credit card information for. So let's say when John and Jane are checking in, John says, oh, I, it's going to be on my credit card. So what we want to do is make sure that the bid number for John and Jane is with John. So we have to do something a little clever here. We're going to click on Jane and check her in first. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete her bid number and we'll remember it, 101. So we will check her in. Now we will click on John and we will give him 101 and we're going to save his credit card info pretend I did that and then we'll save and check him in so now they're both checked in we save the credit card information with John and the bid numbers with John this way during the auction anything they buy you know silent auction items you'll all be grouped together so it won't matter which of them did it but it'll be with the contact that had uh, the credit card information saved so let's try a different scenario. Let's say someone we don't know shows up. Uh, Brad Smith. 
I don't think we have a Brad Smith in the database. So the message here says, oh, there's no contact here with that name. So we're going to need to create a new contact record. And we'll get his information. And let's say he says, oh, I'm uh, with uh, the Apple Records Company sponsored table. So if we look down in our table captain dropdown, we'll see all of our table captains and any tables that were bought by organizations will be listed at the bottom. So here's the Apple Records and we see that they do have a bunch of available tickets. And so Brad Smith, when we're ready to uh, check him in and for bid number, obviously since we didn't know about him beforehand, he, he hasn't yet been assigned one. And we assume that most auctions, you'll have set up a, a set of packets with bid numbers uh, on the side for anyone who comes in that you didn't know about beforehand. So you'll grab the next uh, package of uh, auction material and you'll see, oh, it's, you know, that's bid number 235 and just put that in here uh, and save and check Brad in. And now we see he's checked in and he's uh, at the Apple Records table. Now I want to show you what it looks like if you have Click and Pledge integrated. So let's say a new guest appears, uh, Johnny Cat. We find that he's been assigned to a table and we want to save their credit card information. And with Click and Pledge, you're able to specify that their payment processor appears right in the window because it's much smaller than a brickwork. So you would fill it out and save the payment information here. And then you would once again do save and check in contact. And they would be good to go. So now let's look at purchases uh, and how you do that during the evening. So we've clicked on the purchases tab and if we already had any, they would appear here under this list. And we should click on the new button. This will bring up our new auction purchase wizard where you're able to enter multiple purchases at one time. So if you're handed a big stack of uh, silent auction items that, you know, that round just closed and you want to enter a bunch, you can do them all at once. And we try to make this very fast. So you can enter people just by putting in their bid number and it will do a lookup. You can also pick them from the list, but uh, if you've got bid numbers, that's probably the fastest way to go. Similarly with auction items, we can do it by number, um, but also if you don't have those numbers, you can see that you see the full list here. And you just whoops, put in the full amount, $15. Now we should mark it paid during the auction because they'll actually pay at the end of the auction. Now if you were using this tool, let's say the day after the auction because you decided to do it all by paper, uh, and you've already charged your credit cards, then you would go ahead and mark them paid right now. But uh, if you're doing it during the auction, probably best to leave it unchecked. And let's add a few more. Let's say Johnny also got, uh, well, he's already got a box of catnip, so how about some beer to go with that? $25. Um, and let's see, someone else, 102. Who's that? Luna. Great. Another case of catnip for... 25. So once you've entered all the purchases you want to deal with at this time, you just click on the save button and the system will have saved it. If we click close, uh, you'll see that now these purchases appear. So now we'll go back to the new auction purchase wizard. And the one thing you'll notice when it comes up, if we look at the items that are available, there's less items showing now. And that's because the system knows that some of those items have already been purchased and so it's not going to show them. But this can be a problem for some items. So for example, our raise the paddle is something that we want everyone to be able to do. And if we didn't set things up correctly, if I pick some people to do raise the paddle and this person gave $15 and this person did, uh, uh, 25 and if I hit save here I can get this error it says well it's already been purchased because here are two people trying to purchase the same thing now in this 
case, we actually want to allow that. So here's what you need to do. You need to go to your auction items tab, find that item, here it is, raise the paddle, click on edit, and here you'll see we have a checkbox, which is, do you want to allow multiple purchases of this item? Now we of course should have set it up this way originally when we created this item. But sometimes at an auction you'll get one of your donors to say, hey, I'm feeling so good, you can go ahead and auction off my cabin for another weekend. And you originally weren't expecting that. So if you're trying to enter those purchases and getting the error, uh, just come here and say, allow multiple purchases and click save. Now, if we go back to purchases and try and purchase that item. So paddle for $15, oops. One to one, paddle, $25, and we click save here, and you'll see there's no problem. Close that, and you can see uh, multiple of those paddles items were purchased. These were also tracked to be uh, gifts rather than uh, an actual item that they would get with a, a, a fair market value they can deduct. So now we're gonna look at what the checkout tab does. So at the end of the evening, as guests are coming to check out, uh, you will be able to enter them here. And you can either put in their name or put in just their bid number, or you can do a drop down to see everyone in the auction. And this will show all of the purchases that they've made and the ones that have not yet been paid for, which in this case are all of them, uh, we'll automatically check off and we'll give you a total of how much uh, that person owes. You can take, you know, cash or a check, write the check number. And if you take a credit card, then we'll load that payment processor. Uh, in this case, we have it set up for click and pledge and it loads. And you can see that uh, it's correctly set the amount to $55. And if we had previously saved this person's credit card information, click and pledge would give us a little drop down where we could choose that credit card rather than having to enter the card number again. Once we've processed the payment, which I won't do right now, uh, it's very important that you update the opportunities so that the system knows that those have been paid for. So let's pretend we paid, we click on update opportunities, and you'll see it, the page refreshes and it says they're all paid and nothing more is due. Now you can, at this time, actually print out a receipt for them. So you can click on the view receipt button and that will bring up a, a PDF file that shows all of their purchases. So here's that file, shows the purchases, uh, the fair market value of the items and what's deductible. And if you read the installation guide, uh, you'll know that all of the text here can be customized to what you want for your auction. So let's try someone else. Uh, let's try Luna. So with this person, you see their auction tickets are listed, but they already paid for those, you know, a month ago, let's pretend. And so the system knows that. So we're only checking off uh, this one item that they want to pay for now. And so we have the $25. Now, let's say you're dealing with someone who made a big uh, raise the paddle type of gift. Let's so let's look at someone else. Oops. And with this person, we can see that they already had paid for their tickets. They bought this one item. And then let's say they gave a, a, a large, you know, raise the paddle gift. And let's say they tell you, well, I don't actually want to pay for that tonight. You know, I'm going to send a check uh, next week. So you can uncheck that off. We'll correctly update how much they're gonna pay for now, the 25. You can you know, record the check or, uh, or use the credit card. And then update the opportunities and you'll see that that one is marked paid, uh, but the raise the paddle one is, is still unpaid and you would just say next guest if they're not gonna deal with that now. Now what's interesting is this detects that we have some that are marked, that are checked off. And so it's asking us, are you sure you've updated your opportunities or not? 
uh, we have, so we can just click OK to say it's, it's OK to, to move on. And it'll take us to a fresh page. So that covers most of the important items that you need to know uh, for managing your auction the night of the event. There's lots more information um, from the website, djhconsulting.com, uh, including a, a user's guide that goes through all of this stuff in much more detail. Thanks for watching and good luck with your auction.